is. He's hissing. It's not hissing. It's just doing the thing with his tongue. I'm trying to get this in slow motion. You need to move or strike or jump or something. Yeah, look. He's doing the thing with the tongue. Take out the picture. I don't know. Maybe it's a bad idea. <laughs> He looks like he's about to strike. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Pals of Tech. Today, we're talking about two ways that you can capture slow motion footage with your Fujifilm camera. When dealing with slow motion, the number one thing you always need to keep in mind is your frame rate. In other words, how many frames per second you've set your camera to shoot in. Now, for most videos that have action that appears in real time, you would want to shoot in either 24 or 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second is the default on most devices, and that's what smartphones and consumer cameras default to. You know, I've been reading a lot lately about the pioneers of early cinema, and they all shot at 24 frames per second. When George Milies created his famous Voyage to the Moon in 1902, he used a hand crank camera, knowing that he'd be playing it back at 24 frames per second. So to get slow motion, these early pioneers had to think about the frame rate that they were shooting in versus the frame rate that would be played back to their audience. In Fujifilm cameras like the X-T3, the X-T4, the X-H1, the GFX, the X-S10, the frame rate is controlled right here in the movie options area. The options on this menu will change depending upon what codec you're shooting, your compression choice, and whether or not you're shooting in 4K. I have videos explaining codecs and this very topic, so ye who wish to learn more about codecs, go forth now and seek those videos out. Now what can be confusing about frame rate is wrapping your mind around the fact that no matter what frame rate you shoot in, you can convert that footage later on in post-production to a different frame frame rate so that it plays back normally in real time. So I'm going to create a 4K movie called My Awesome Movie, and I'm going to tell Final Cut Pro, and you can do this in any editor, the process is pretty much the same, that I want to save and show and have this movie that I'm making in 24 frames per second. So the eventual output is going to be 24 frames per second. I'm going to go ahead and choose that right here and click OK. Now I have a blank timeline, and I'm going to drag two pieces of footage to that timeline. Both of them them shot on this Fujifilm camera. One of them is in 24 frames per second. The other one was shot at 60 frames per second. Here's the first one right here, shot at 24 frames per second. Let's drag it onto the timeline and start playing it back. So I'm now shooting this at 24 frames per second and you can see and hear me normally. So there you go. Footage that was shot at 24 frames per second in the camera is being played back at 24 frames per second. Exactly even. And it looks and sounds like the real world, right? <laughs> now let's try it with 60 frames per second. I'm dragging my 60 frame per second clip onto the timeline. I am shooting this at 60 frames per second and you can hear and see me normally. We have two very different frame rates. Both of them are put on a 24 frame per second timeline. Well, what's happened is that Final Cut Pro or any editing program that you use is processing and doing things called conforming the footage to the frame rate that you're eventually going to save it as. In this case, it's 24 frames per second. So it took the 60 frame per second video and it dropped a bunch of frames, not that you you'd really notice it. And so you can then use really footage that shot at 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second. You can use that in your timeline in post-production. It gives you that flexibility. But let's say I don't want to conform it. Let's say I want to have it play back in my 24 frames per second timeline. I want to have it play back at the original rate of 60 frames per second that I shot it, okay? Watch this. Automatic speed. Have a look at this. Whoa, look at that. It slowed it down 40%. This is because we shot it at 60 frames per second, but the final video playback is set to 24 frames per second. And this is because 24 is 40% of 60. It plays back slower if you tell the program not to conform it. And when you go to play it back, check it out. You see how it's playing back here at 40% of the original speed. Now for a talking headshot that 
that's kind of stupid. But where this looks great is that cinematic B-roll, like birds flying, right? Or Fujifilm boxes on fire. Those kinds of shots are wonderful when they're played back in slow motion. But you gotta be careful if you have audio that you recorded at the time you originally shot. Check it out. I'm shooting this at 60 frames per second because it's gonna slow down the audio as well. You see the problem? Ugh. And that just won't work. So if you wanna play back your original non-conformed frame rate inside of a lower frame rate project, and you insist on keeping your audio, then at least make sure you are holding a bottle of whiskey or tequila. It'll just match better, <laughs> right? Audio doesn't always play nicely with video when it's recorded like this. So shooting at higher frame rates, so long as you don't slow down the audio, gives you the option in post-production to slow down your footage for those awesome cinematic B-roll shots. So I'm gonna tell you the second way to shoot slow motion video right after this message from our sponsor. Now friends, how was your day today? Did you find yourself frustrated because you're under a project deadline and still haven't gotten all of your B-roll finished? Let me tell you about a service called Storyblocks. Storyblocks has an ever-growing library of 1 million high-quality stock assets, including 4K HD footage, After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, music, images, sound effects, and more. These assets are all royalty-free, so you can use downloaded content anywhere for commercial and personal use. Now, I've used some of their footage from time to time, except for this shot here where I was passed out on the bench. For that piece of footage, we shot it ourselves. So be sure to check out Storyblocks for their high quality stock assets. You won't be disappointed and you may just end up getting the very shot that you need. I'll catch you later in the next video soon. Okay, this... <laughs> <laughs> the second way of shooting slow motion video on your Fujifilm camera is to use what is called the high speed record feature. Now this isn't on all Fujifilm cameras, but if it's on yours, you will find it right here in the movie settings area. When you shoot in this mode, your video is actually already converted into a slow motion clip before it's saved to the SD card. You don't have to do anything to make it slow motion in post-production. So think of this feature is sort of like shooting JPEG. It's easier, but it's not quite as good quality and you don't have as many options in post-production with your footage. So when you go into the full HD high-speed record screen, you have two different columns. You see that right here? The first column, the choices on your left, are the playback frame rate choices. Think of these as what your final overall video project frame rate is going to be. Sort of like what you set in post-production. Now, if you aren't sure at what playback frame rate to set it to, then just go ahead and set it to 30 frames per second for the playback. That should be fine for most situations. Now, the second column is even more important and it allows you to choose the shooting frame rate. Now, in the column, you may see some values grayed out. This depends on what other options you have set for your camera's movie mode. Now on the X-T4, for example, with most Fujifilm shooters in most situations, you're going to be concerned with two values, 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. And as you can see, if your playback is set to 30 frames per second and you set your shooting frames per second to 120, it will give you four times slow motion. If you kick it up to 240, you'll get eight times slow motion. However, if you play it back later on down the road at 24 frames a second and choose 240, then you're going to get the maximum the X-T4 can give you in slow-mo, which is 240 frames per second. When I tested this out, it became obvious to me that the quality of the footage generated by the Fujifilm camera at 120 frames per second is much better than 240 frames per second. Have a look Look at this comparison. The footage on the left was shot at 120 frames per second and the footage on the right at 240 frames per second. All other settings were the same. So unless you really need 240 frames per second, I recommend that you only use 120 frames per second when using this Fujifilm feature. Now I have a few things for you to keep in mind when shooting with this high speed record feature. First, you cannot record audio, video only. But that's okay because <laughs> At these frame rates, you're not likely to be recording audio anyway. Second, you can only shoot in 1080 HD. 
No 4K with this feature. This camera, any Fujifilm camera for that matter, simply cannot handle those high frame rates at 4K resolution. Third, when you are shooting with the Fuji high speed record feature, your camera will automatically set your shutter speed and you cannot lower it below that value. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and set my frame rate to 240. Have a look at this. It says shutter speed 240. Now, if I rotate the top dial on the camera, look, it's not moving at all. You see that? Until I get to past 240. Now I can go higher. Look at that. I can make my shutter speed 1000. But what I cannot do is lower the shutter speed below what Fuji has set it to here. And fourth, the maximum time that you can shoot in high speed recording is six minutes. Depending upon some of your camera settings though, it may even be less than that. So the bottom line here is this. First off, don't use the high speed record slow-mo feature on Fujifilm cameras unless you absolutely have to. However, if you do need slower motion and you absolutely have to use those higher frame rates, then shoot at high speed record at 120 frames per second instead of the maximum 240 as you will get better image quality. It's not the highest frame rate that this camera offers, but it still looks great. And in some cases, you can actually end up slowing it down too much. So really, slower doesn't always mean better. You're really gonna need to experiment and figure out what works best for you. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I am gonna get out and shoot some slow-mo footage. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm signing off now, and I will see all of you in a video next week. Take care.